following show is controversial and contains content you may find offensive. Listener discretion is advised. 98 FM Dublin Talks. Dublin Talks with Adrian Kennedy. Wednesday morning. Good morning. How are you this morning? Good? Hope so. I'm Adrian Kennedy and between now and midday today, this is 98 FM's Dublin Talks, the mid-morning talk and phone-in show for Dublin, by Dublin and about Dublin. We have a busy programme for you between now and midday today. Are you renting a house in Dublin at the moment while trying to save up for a mortgage? It can be very, very difficult. If you're whacking out full rent, full market rent here in Dublin and trying to save for a mortgage at the same time, you'd want to be a multi-millionaire nearly. Well, we're going to be, uh, we have a story for you in a second. They, you know, they, people give out about landlords. Well, I have a story of a landlord who wants to do something to help. I'll explain all in uh, just a moment. Dublin City Council is going to have to fork out, get a load of this, €900,000 to clean up graffiti in the city. Nine hundred grand just to clean up the mess that somebody decides to leave um, scrawling their tag on uh, on walls around the city. We're going to be finding out why people feel the need to do it and um, yeah, why the city council is spending that amount of money. There's graffiti everywhere. Does it do any harm? We'll be hearing about wedding disaster stories and also why women are judged for not wanting uh, children. We'll deal with that a little bit later on. All that and much more between now and midday today. Uh, First off, are you a brutal romantic? (laughs) Do you fear Valentine's Day? Are you the sort of person that never remembers to get uh, a card for your other half? Never remembers flowers? Just um, Valentine's Day means nothing for you. Well, we're going to give you the opportunity here at 98FM's Dublin Talks to make up for all the years of you being a, a crap romantic for Valentine's Day. Here's what we're doing. We've uh, teamed up with our friends at the Radisson Blue Hotel on uh, Golden Lane here in the city centre to treat you and your partner to an overnight stay on Valentine's Day, which is next week. So you'll relax in the stylish city centre hotel with breakfast and dinner in the elegant V&V restaurant where executive chef Tommy Butler has created a special Valentine's Day um, menu. So all you have to do is to tell us how bad a Valentine you actually are. We want to hear your embarrassing stories because on Valentine's Day, Jeremy could be calling to your partner to surprise them. It might be in their office, at home or whatever. Um, and you could earn yourself serious brownie points. A lovely night in a city centre hotel with a lovely dinner and a lovely breakfast. And it'll just be lovely. And you can be all romantic and make up for all the years of not being romantic. If you would like to take part in the competition, all you have to do is log on to 98fm.com forward slash love. It couldn't be simpler, okay? 98fm.com forward slash love. Get onto our website right now because a little bit later on on the programme we're going to be taking a couple of qualifiers on the air to find out just how bad they are as uh, Valentines and how unromantic they actually are. Okay, so that's coming up a little bit later on but if you want to enter the competition go to 98fm.com forward slash love and uh, fill out all your details. Uh, The more embarrassing the better, basically. (laughs) Um, So if you are the world's worst Valentine uh, this competition is for you and this competition is your opportunity to make up for uh, all all your woes as a Valentine over the years. 98fm.com forward slash love and later on in the programme we will be taking uh, a couple of callers on the air who uh, have qualified for the competition. Haven't necessarily won it yet, but have qualified. So if you want to be in that bunch, 98fm.com forward slash love. Now, are you one of the many couples trying to save up for a mortgage at the moment? Are you struggling to save up because, at the same time, you're paying out money on rent as well? I know an awful lot of people are in this situation where they need to put a roof over their heads. They may have children. uh, They may both be working full time. And all of their spare money is going on rent. So when it comes to saving for a mortgage, it's extremely difficult. They're putting away not as much as they should be. It can be near impossible to get the money together for a mortgage deposit when you're paying out rent at the same time. 
Well, one particular landlord has uh, decided to come up with a plan and you want to hear this. If you are in that situation, a letting agency based in City West, uh, which is howleysown.ie, has a client that owns a two-bedroom terrace house in Ongar in uh, Dublin 15. And David uh, Soen from Howley Soen joins me on the line. David, welcome to 98FM. Good morning, Jeremy. How are you? Um, David, tell me a little bit about uh, what this landlord wants to do. Well, basically, this landlord is a, a woman that has never married or never had any children. And she is very conscious of the rent market at the moment. So she has this lovely property, great location, close to all local amenities, schools, shops, the whole lot. The rental value of this property, if I was to put it on the internet today, would be between 16 and 1700 euros per month. This particular lady would like to offer this property for half that at 800 euros a month. It has to be a, a professional couple or family that is actually looking for a mortgage that is made an application as rejected for one reason or another. And, uh, uh, and possibly one of the reasons for rejection is they don't have enough money saved or they're absolutely. spending too much money on rent or whatever. Whatever the reason might be. And basically... By doing this, it'll allow this professional couple save anything upwards of ten thousand a year towards their savings for the mortgage. Okay, so She's well, offering did... this house for a minimum twelve month lease mm-hmm. to a maximum of twenty four month lease. So there's potentially here someone could save twenty thousand towards their mortgage. Now, I'm I'm curious as to know why this particular lady decided to do this. The reason being is that she is reading newspapers, listening to radio shows, and she is very conscious of the difficulties that young people have trying to rent and save at the same time. And basically, this is her little way of being a good Samaritan, I suppose, to show that little bit of generosity. Landlords do get an awful lot of bad press. And um, she says, well, not everybody's the same. It's the same type of person. She has this property at 800 euros a month for mortgages covered, and she doesn't want to make fast sums off it. It's basically to help people out and give them the opportunity to live in private rental sector while saving for their mortgage. Wow, that's very, very decent of her, I have to say. Now, I'm looking at a... We've uh, just posted um, a photograph of the house on our Facebook page, which is facebook.com slash Adrian K and Jeremy D. Facebook.com slash Adrian K and Jeremy D, if you want to have a look at it. Um, So, okay, so this house, uh, which could get a a market rental value of about 17, 17 17.50 a month, Mm -hmm. is being offered for uh, how much? Well, at the moment, we are trying to find this particular person. She's very specific in what she's looking for. She's looking to help someone find a mortgage. So as a little tester, we put the property on daft.ie yesterday. And in less than 24 hours, we had over 17,000 hits. Uh, 17, hits. Um, we've had nearly 300 email inquiries. And just simply to filter through all them would be nigh on impossible. So we suggested this to go to contact yourselves and to find, as I said, she's very specific what she's looking for. She really wants to help somebody out so they can eventually buy the property. She'd like to do this every 12, 24 months. Mm. So basically, we couldn't conceivably go through all those email inquiries. I mean, if we were put, put, put it on Daft at 800, I mean, we just couldn't manage the the... the the overflow of calls, to be honest. So um, we've done this now. So it's very specific. Professional couple. It's the same way. It's going to be a, a, a tenancy agreement for 12 months with an option to renew for further 12. It's uh, The lease will be in line with the Residential Tenancies Act. It will be registered with the PRTB and the successful applicant will go through the same procedure as everybody else. Okay, but what you need to be able to prove you is that you are in the market for a mortgage, that you have either applied for a mortgage or Absolutely. you're actively seeking your own mortgage. And uh, if you can meet that criteria, uh, this, this could be for you. 
Absolutely. All yeah. right. Now you, you could you could have even be, even been rejected your mortgage with or even got approval in principle with condition to say that you need to save or you need to have evidence that you can't pay back the mortgage and i.e. paying your rent every month. All right, well, we have, uh, like I said, put a photograph of this particular uh, house. Uh, it's in Ongar. Um, it should fetch a market rent of uh, seventeen fifty a month. But for the right couple, uh, this particular landlord is prepared to offer it for nearly half price. Okay, now, if you go onto our Facebook page, which is facebook.com slash Adrian K and Jeremy D, you'll see a photograph of the house, but also um, a link directly to a form that you have to fill out. Is it a complicated form to fill out, David? No, it's your, on your personal information, the only agent would ask for in preparing the tenancy agreement. Okay, right, so you, um, if you want to find out more about this, uh, this could suit some couple and get them set up and get them saving properly for a couple of years and get them their own mortgage uh, and they're all sorted, which is absolutely fantastic. Um, you log on to our Facebook page, which is facebook.com slash Adrian K and Jeremy D. On there, you'll see a photograph of the house itself, but then a link which will bring you directly to the form that you have to fill out um, with uh, Howley Sohn uh, Auctioneers. It's a fabulous idea, David, uh, and one I, I, I hope you pass on our regards to that particular landlord. I know yeah. she wants to, uh, she doesn't want to go public about it, she doesn't want to be identified, which is fair enough, uh, but it's something that she, she wants to do to help a young couple to get on the housing ladder. Uh, it's, it's a fantastic idea, it really is. Uh, and I know you'll be flooded with people filling out uh, application forms today. Um, and do it through our Facebook page right now if you want to uh, avail of that. Um, David Sohn from Howley Sohn uh, Real Estate, thank you very much indeed for talking to us on 98FM. Thank you, Adrian. Best of luck. Bye-bye. Take care. There you Bye-bye. go. Um, and once again, the details are on our Facebook page and I can see already uh, the reaction to it, the amount of people sharing it um, and uh, all of that. But this is is just for uh, couples or people who can prove that they are actively trying to get a mortgage and for whatever reason, mainly because they're trapped in the rental market, uh, they haven't been able to get it. And this particular landlord is prepared to offer this house for rent for half its market value. It's a brilliant idea, it really is. Uh, so once again, uh, log on to our Facebook page right now, which is facebook.com slash Adrian K and Jeremy D if you want to uh, see a photograph of the house and a link directly to the page on uh, the Howley Sohn, um website that you have to fill out uh, to express your interest. All right, very best of luck. And um, we let you know when um, that particular landlord chooses somebody. So best of luck. Now, next on the programme, uh, we have several questions for you that we want to deal with in, uh, in just a moment. In regards to graffiti, walk around the city centre and you will see it everywhere, on walls, on hoardings, on public transport. And the question is, is so-called street art uh, just glorified vandalism? Should graffiti artists be given a wall on which to display their art to stop them defacing public property? Do we need a clampdown on uh, graffiti? Um, where people are prosecuted and made to do community service and actually made to clean it up themselves? Or maybe you consider uh, graffiti as street art. Either way, I'd love to hear from you on 67979981. You can text or WhatsApp your opinion to us to 0877 989898. 0877 um, The reason that we're um, mentioning this is that Dublin City Council has announced that it will have to pay around €900,000 to private firms over the next three years to help clean up graffiti around the city city. 900 grand to clean up graffiti. The council has already spent 1.2 million over five years removing graffiti. So it appears that it's a huge issue that is costing the taxpayer an awful lot of money that could be used uh, elsewhere. I'm joined on the line by uh, independent councillor Mannix Flynn, who is... You get very annoyed by graffiti, Mannix. Well, I do indeed get very annoyed by, by the amount of money that it costs to remove it. Uh, and also the fact that, you know, as far as I'm concerned, it's vandalism. It's malicious damage to property. And while Dublin City Council has spent over a million euros plus 
removing uh, offensive graffiti uh, uh, from various walls and doors, etc. There are many people who actually don't even bother calling the council and then spend their time and their money repainting their own premises. Uh, again, and that amount of money that the city council uh, spends tails into insignificance when you see the amount of money that's paid by Irish Rail in removing graffiti from the sea walls, etc. So the situation is, is that if you go along to somebody's premises and you kick the door and you damage the door, you damage the paint, or you crack a window, you're charged with malicious damage and you go before the courts. However, if you spray paint the place with your tag name, uh, well then there's no such a prosecution, or there's very little prosecution. We know in the past two years there was one individual, Robot, I think his name was, who was brought before the courts for damage in excess of 100,000 euros. It was huge. Now, I think you have to, I suppose, make the difference between what is art, street art or gallery art, or art in general, and what is graffiti. I'm all on for art, but it, be it in the public domain, uh, be it in galleries, be it in homes. That's no problem whatsoever. And we are making every effort to actually facilitate individuals who see themselves as street artists. But many of them actually see themselves, you know, as having an absolute right to go out there and actually paint across premises without any uh, any, uh, permission from owners or any permission from Dublin City Council. And in many cases, a lot of the street art that you see out there is actually subliminal advertising for certain big firms, etc., where you see a product being worn by somebody yeah, who is actually in the portrait by being on a wall or whatever. I mean, recently Dublin City Council held a forum uh, for street artists and a number of those artists turned up wearing ballot flowers, citing that they didn't want to be known because they wanted to be anonymous. I mean, again, this is kind of, you know, turning into the ridiculous. At the end of the day, the public ports, the, the people uh, of the city are paying very for this. In the meantime, places like Leinster Square, uh, places like uh, Temple Bar, are awash with litter, and Dublin City Council can't find the extra money that actually would go towards street cleaning. So we have a situation here, as I say, where there's a serious amount of money coming out of the budget. Uh, the people who are creating this vandalism and this malicious damage are not being prosecuted. And then there's this idea that graffiti is okay. It was being brought before on Garda Street Corner. I'm a member of the Joint Police Committee of Dublin City Council. Dublin City Council have put out a small video uh, in order to actually deter children from going out there and tagging and graffiti. But let's face it, the people who are doing this aren't children. The people who are doing this are actually adults. Yes, some they are, yeah. Some of, them, some of them in their 30s, and I come across them all the time with their but stabs let, let, and let their me, hoodies on. Let me ask you, Alex, uh, uh, graffiti is nothing new in a large city like Dublin. Uh, you see it in every single city across Europe. You see it along railway tracks. You see it everywhere. You see it on trains and whatever. And some people, in fact, somebody just uh, sent me a message a moment ago. Um, 900 grand is a ridiculous amount of money to be spending on removing graffiti. Leave it there unless it names specific people or is degrading to people or businesses. What do you say but to the, that? But it, but it is degrading people and businesses. I mean, the fact of the matter, you come into your, you know, your premises on a Monday morning and it's graffiti. You didn't ask for it to be there. You've got to remove that. There are also ghetto wises areas. I know there's places like Barcelona where there's a, you know, there's a, there's a, there's a blind eye coming to it to, to some extent. But this is Dublin. This is wholesale, like, you know, as I say, malicious damage. And if you turned around and you said, okay, just leave it, what would you have? You'd have a place looking gaudy, looking tacky, looking appallingly bad. And where do you stop? So anybody can turn around and spray paint your building and you're to put up with it. You can turn around and say, oh, yeah, that, that's no problem. I mean, it costs a huge amount of money to maintain your building. It costs a lot of money to maintain the walls of Dublin City Council, the walls of the, of the, of the River Liffey. So if you want them spray painted... I mean, that's ancient granite. That's part of your heritage. Okay, so you when, want, I, when I hear of a figure, it. when I hear of a figure of close to a million euro for the next couple of years, uh, the Dublin City Council is going to have to lash out on cleaning up graffiti. Um, what, you obviously want to see more severe prosecutions for people um, found guilty of, of uh, graffiti. It, it, the reality of it is, they're so clever about doing it that they never get caught. Well, they do get caught, actually. As I said, there was one individual brought before, for, before the court recently for spray painting trains, etc. So there's a whole issue there. If you look into the, into the archive, you'll see it. So individuals do get caught. They do get before the court. And there is penalty and there is sanction. But I would like to, like, you know, as they challenge this idea that this is all cool and it's all grand and it's, we all really want it. It's, we don't actually want it. The people in York City Flats who woke up one morning to see their flats being completely destroyed by graffiti didn't want it. It wasn't the kids in those flats that are doing it. So there is an appropriate place for street art, there's an appropriate place for art, and perhaps there's even an appropriate place for what is known as graffiti, where you would put it on a board and then the board would be removed. 
But the wholesale, like, you know, damaging of the city, for instance, if you pull up an illegal poster, it's taken down. If you pull up, like, you know, uh, you know, you know, an illegal building, it's taken down. This graffiti is illegal. This street art is by and large illegal unless there's, unless there's you, know, you know, permissions given to it. And I'd say there's some very good artists out there, but everybody thinks they're a Banksy, and they're not a Banksy. Okay, for um, the, finally, Manix, the is there not an onus on Dublin City Council to provide areas for people to do their graffiti? But we, but there we aren't enough. Provide, but there but, aren't but, enough. But, 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 but Adrian, we do do that, and we had a forum recently in the Mountain House where we invited such individuals to come along and let us know what their desires would be in order to curtail and stop the malicious damage that's happening out there in our lovely city. It's unacceptable. In the same way it's unacceptable that people would place vast amounts of rusty locks on the uh, Liffey Bridge, the Hapenny Bridge. It's not acceptable. And if we're not careful, we end up one day with a city that actually looks like, like some sort of getaway there. In New York, they clamp down on this situation. It's a great effect. You simply can't have people coming into the city centre and tooling up with balaclavas, with masks, with hoodies, and then basically spray painting your walls. It's not good enough. And as I say, we are willing to walk alongside these individual artists to provide the spaces for them. But as I say, to no avail, they still want to go out there and they still want to climb on top of roofs, they still want to climb on top of buildings and spray paint your, your, you know, your roof, spray paint the, the, whole, the whole front of your building and then run away. And as I say, the guys at your corner are busy enough and having to deal with serious crime in the city without having to deal with this. But I have to say, this was... Some parents even drive their, you know, their young you know, youths in to the city centre to do all this. It's not cool, it's not sexy, it's not groovy, and it's not art. So please stop it. OK. Councillor Malik Sven, thank you very much indeed for joining us on 98FM. Uh, there's reactions to this already. I have a simple question for you, and I want you to text in to our WhatsApp to 0877 98 98 98. When you see graffiti uh, around Dublin, do you see it as creative street art, or do you see it as pure and utter illegal vandalism? Just text your answer or WhatsApp your answer to 0877 98 98 98. 0877 98 98 98. Um, when you see graffiti on walls, on um, shop fronts, on whatever, do you see it as uh, creative street art or absolute vandalism? Call me right now on 6797981, but text or WhatsApp your answer to that to 0877 98, 98, 98 and you can also send us a WhatsApp voice message to that same number, 0877 989898. 98 FM. Dublin Talks. With Dev Kelly Interiors. New store now open at Belgard Road, Tala. 98 FM. And this is Adrian Kennedy with you until midday today, this uh, Wednesday. I hope everything is good with you. Um, we're in the middle of a conversation about graffiti and I'm shocked by the amount of money that Dublin City Council has announced that it will have to pay over the next three years. Nearly a million quid, over 900,000 euro just to clean up graffiti around the city. In the last five years, the council has already spent 1.2 million removing graffiti. So it's a huge issue. It's costing the taxpayer uh, an awful lot of money but what do you think of um, graffiti? When you see it on, for example, a shutter um, of a shop when it's closed at night or on a wall or whatever, do you see it as creative street art or um, just vandalism? Illegal vandalism. I want you to text or WhatsApp the answer to that question to 0877 98 98 98. 0877 98 98 98. Let me uh, have a listen to uh, this WhatsApp voice message. Hi, Adrian. Walking around Rome where graffiti originated, it is everywhere, as well as Prague, Amsterdam, and various other European cities. I think 900,000 euro is a ridiculous amount of money to be spending or removing it. Just leave it there, unless it names specific people or is degrading to people and businesses. Cheers. All right, thank you very much indeed. If you want to send a WhatsApp voice message, you just simply send a WhatsApp voice message to 0877 98 98 98 if you're not available to take a call. Uh, Eddie, you're on 98 FM. How are you, Eddie? Good morning, Eddie. You well? Good, thanks, Eddie. Um, you're from Bluebell. Um, is there much graffiti around your area? Uh, no, I walk in this area. Um, the odd bit. 
Well, let's, let's be honest here, right? You're never going to get rid of it, right? Even if you set up a big corner in Dublin and called it Graffiti Corner, right? Let them all do their thing. And every month painted it and they come back again. They would still go to other areas of Dublin because I think the thrill is doing it and not getting caught. Mm. You know what I mean? Now, however, if they are caught, they should prosecute it. But no way on God's earth should we be paying nearly a million euro to clean that. I said it before, we talked about this a couple of weeks ago. There's something like 10,000 people over a year on the dole unemployed and then something like 700 on the dole over 10 years who are claiming job seekers. It's those people well, they should be who made, should be made clean that. They should be told to get out and clean up the graffiti. 100%. Even, even and if every they didn't... single person that gets on this radio I reckon they'll agree. They're collecting money for nothing, not contributing to society, not bothering their arse to get, to get off their arse and get a job, yet still, still taking the benefits that are handed down. So they should be told, right, this is a crack. You're on the dole pile 10 years. 10 years and you can't get why, a job. Why should somebody on the dole have to clean up somebody else's graffiti? Because it, it helps in the long run. Because if they go, right, okay, I have to get out my arse to clean this. Sure, I might as well go and get a proper job and get real money. You know what I mean? It has a knock-on effect. We shouldn't be paying 900, pound, uh, 900 grand of our taxes for okay. people. I was a- okay, I was asking uh, the question and asking people to text in the answer to it. Uh, when they see graffiti, do they see it as creative street art or do they see it as mindless and legal vandalism? Well, and an awful depends. lot of people, an awful lot of people, I have to tell you, Eddie, are saying that it is uh, street art. Adrian, it depends on where it is. If you're running a business in the capital and you come in and somebody defaced your property, i.e. all over your shutters, or, or your walls, it just looks horrible. You might lose clients, you might lose a bit of business. Well, you won't really if it's, on, you won't if it's on your shutters because you just roll up your shutters when yeah, you arrive Yeah, but it might not work. be on your shutters. It might be on your walls or something. Now, there's no doubt some of them are brilliant and talented. Like, if I'm on a train and I'm going down the country and I see it from the train on the back of a wall or something, it doesn't bother me. It's in the middle of nowhere. You know what I mean? But if that's affecting your business and painting it in a bad light, that's not good. And why do you and think then, it does affect then, business? The, uh, well, of course it does. And then that person who's running that business, he doesn't want it there. He didn't ask for it to be put there, and he has he wants it gone. So he has to shell out and clean it. You know what I mean? All but right. So out. okay. So you see it as as mindless vandalism, basically. It depends general. on where it is. Like I said, there's some of them are fantastic. They're talented. But if you were defacing someone's property without their consent, that's vandalism. That's what vandalism is. You know what I mean? So. Okay, no. stay, stay there for one second. Six seven nine seven ninety eight one is our telephone number. You can text or WhatsApp zero eight seven seven ninety eight ninety eight ninety eight. You can also um, sp- or send a WhatsApp voice message to that same number zero eight seven seven ninety eight ninety eight ninety eight. Uh, Morgan is in Clondalkin. and you're on ninety eight FM. Morgan, how are you? How are you doing? How are things? Good, thank you. Well, um, you think it looks great in certain places. I think in certain places, I think it makes it makes some some parts of the city quite cool. I mean, there's, you have electricity boxes, big ugly green electricity box on the side of the street, and I've I've recently seen people, you know, putting their artistic flair, as it were, on them. Um, okay, but the, not... the difference there is that, uh, and I've seen them myself. I've seen some brilliant, mm. um, you know, the, the traffic light boxes. They're just yeah, grey boxes correct. standing there. Yeah. Uh, but they've been commissioned to be painted. They weren't yeah, just like, ra- randomers turning up and painting them. They were commissioned to be painted. Well, I think, I think that's a fabulous idea. Mm. I think that's a fabulous idea. I don't, I don't agree with somebody as it were putting their tag. You know, like I don't know some some weird name or something on it. You know, and just making it making a mess of things. I think. Like your last caller was saying there about you know people's premises and stuff, and I'd agree with him one hundred percent. I mean, it's it's that person's premises; it's defacing somebody's business. They should, people shouldn't be allowed to do that. Um, I also well, let's, let's make it clear they're not. Um, but what do you think on the on the fact that over the next two years the city council is going to spend nine hundred grand uh, cleaning up graffiti? A lot of people think it's a waste of money and graffiti is harmless. I. I I, that's a tough. That's a tough. That's a tough question. I think. I think. Um, your last caller hit, hit the, the nail on the head, as it were, when he said, "Get the unemployed who are who are who are claiming benefit to clean it. Give them a sense of purpose to do something, and get them off the dole. Because if they have to go out and do ten or fifteen hours a week, you know, cleaning graffiti, they're still going to get annoyed with it, and they're going to actually go out and get a job. I mean, there's jobs out there, but how many people have got claiming the dole? I mean. Thousands, millions, you know, it's, it's ridiculous. And they're doing nothing. They're sitting at home doing nothing. They're not even looking for a job. So give them a sense of purpose. Get them out there cleaning, cleaning the streets, cleaning the graffiti, 
And it wasn't there. I think that's desperately unfair that somebody who's on the dole should be made to go and clean somebody else's graffiti. Listen, there's a, there's a lot of people on the dole that, that don't need to be on the dole. Um, they're, they're able-bodied people with the minds that can go out and do jobs. Um, I, I myself am in the catering trade. We find it impossible to get staff and there's people out there who can do these jobs. With a little bit of training, they can do these jobs and it's all done in, in-house. So I don't agree with that. I think there's a lot of people out there just sitting on their on their hands doing nothing. To stay, be honest, stay there for one second, uh, Jason. You're on ninety eight FM. How are you, Jason? Good day, Adrian. Uh, Jason, you're a courier. Tell me what happened last week. I packed um, overnight down uh, just off Cork Street, Newmarket Square, and the local man who has all the plates vandalised down there decided to sign my vehicle, my van, with his name and permanent marker. Lovely. Destroyed it. I autographed it, his name all over my van, the side of my van. With permanent marker. Now we got it off myself, but still, the, the, the hatch of driving around the city with his name on it, like, you know? And what, like, what did it say? His name, uh, 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 Tossy or Tassie or something like that. It was hard to make out, like, you know? But if, if you look on the buildings beside where I was parked, it's huge in there in colour just on Cork Street there with a new market square the old uh, derelict building yeah no I know where it is um, uh, right so y- obviously you think that that is mindless vandalism nothing more nothing less was it was, was it even creatively done all oh, creatively done on, uh, <laughs> creative for him not for me on the side of me back no no I understand that but w- w- was it artistic no. I, know, I know you didn't want it on your van but was it even <laughs> was there, I'll tell you what I do too Okay, well, that, that answers my question then. Um, okay, stay, stay there for one second. Let me bring in uh, one or two more calls um, and a message here on WhatsApp. 900,000 is nothing. What about the, uh, the two billion being spent on the second rate children's hospital or hundreds of millions paid out to unsecured bondholders or the one million we're paying out uh, to a company to figure out why the new hospital is costing so much? The country's a joke, says uh, Gary. Um, Liz, you're on 98 FM. How are you, Liz? Hi. Liz, you think it's an awful waste of money um, doing that, cleaning up uh, graffiti? I do think it's an awful waste of money, and I think that's an awful idea as well to be making people who are on the dole clean it. I don't understand if they want to clean that badly. Why is it not part of the punishment for all these people who apparently are being caught doing it? Well, I don't believe many are being caught for doing it. and, and, And yes, there are. I know Manic Slim was saying uh, people have been caught, but I don't believe it's that many. I don't believe it's that many myself. And if it is that many, if they want to clean that badly, why isn't it part of the punishment? Why isn't it part of their jail? If they're they're getting sent to jail as a jail sentence, why isn't it even part of that couple of hours out every day? Get them painting it. I don't see why somebody on the dole should have to clean it just because they happen to be on the dole. Like your last two callers were saying, I just, I don't get it at all. I think it's an appalling waste of money. Do you not think, though, the graffiti makes areas look awful, makes them look run I down? I think some of it does. I think, some, I think somebody walking around with a little one spray can and just randomly drawing squiggles or their name on, a, on somebody's shutters, yeah, that's vandalism. But I do think some of it, personally, I think some of it is, is great. I think some of it does look great. And I think there's plenty of spaces around the city where they can be told, look, leave buildings alone do it here like Manic Slim was talking about like the walls along the Lippy I don't see any problem with some people in them I really don't and I don't in fact somebody somebody texted in somebody texted in a minute ago the city is grey enough as it is a bit of colour um, will make it look nicer exactly won't do any harm and there is plenty of graffiti artists out there who are graffiti artists they're not just somebody walking around with as I said a single spray can and putting up whatever they want you know, and I do believe it's vandalism, like the likes of what happened to your man's van there, or like on the shutters of buildings. But at the same time, as I said, there's plenty of actual graffiti artists out there who do, who it is brilliant work, whether it's on the street or not. All right, Liz, thanks very much indeed. And one more message. I love proper graffiti. Graffiti is a form of uh, art and is a way for some individuals to express themselves. When done properly, uh, not this crack of spraying a shutter saying uh, something silly. When they do actual pictures and lettering that looks well, that is art. Uh, That fellow who was uh, talking there is misinformed and has no idea. He needs to have a chat with himself if he thinks that cleaning the graffiti is going to stop it. It's just basically saying, here's a freshly 
repainted wall for you to do it all over again. Point is spending all that money cleaning it up. We are never going to uh, get rid of it, says uh, that message. All right, thanks very much indeed. Uh, for uh, Oh, sorry, Jeremy has a few more messages there. Yeah, but there's just people that have been texting in different places where you can actually see uh, proper graffiti. Now, the, I think we have to distinguish between proper graffiti and tagging. Uh, so uh, tagging, for those of you who don't know, is where a graffiti artist just puts their name uh, in, in fancy writing on a uh, on a wall. Um, but there's several different places in Adrian, if you're in Dublin, Adrian, if you're into graffiti that you can go to. Francis Street, uh, a lot of people have been texting in about. Have you seen the graffiti on Francis Street? No. Okay, so it's just beside um, the old Tivoli Theatre, which is now closed down. And there's an old building, and uh, I'm just going to show you the picture now, and you can explain to listeners. It's a Star Wars mural. Oh, and very it, good. It covers yeah. up a whole wall on uh, Francis Street, and you see Yoda there in Stormtroopers, and it says Stop Wars on it instead of Stars, Star Wars. And it's absolutely uh, beautiful. Uh, also, uh, in the Liberties, uh, there are lots of um, portraits done by that uh, artist, Mazer. You know Mazer? Mm-hmm. And there's uh, one of uh, Anne Devlin, uh, I believe, that's on the wall uh, up in the, the Liberties. And also, uh, a lot of people have been texting in uh, about a car park beside the Tivoli Theatre um, where there's a graffiti gallery. Okay, so I assume this is a place that people actually go to. And um, I'm looking at the different pictures here, and if you can describe them there, I mean, th- that that's not vandalism. No, there. that's lovely, actually. That's very nice. There's beautiful yeah. pic- cartoon pictures uh, done up there. So a lot of, if you're into graffiti and you want to see proper graffiti, uh, the road uh, appears to be up by the Tivoli Theatre and Francis Street. All right, really one nice. final WhatsApp voice message. Uh, it's art when it's good. It's an eyesore and vandalism when it's bad. Yeah, you see, but uh, what you think is good and what I think is good are two completely different things. All right, thanks very much indeed for your message. Now, after the break, no matter how well you plan your wedding day, something always goes wrong, even if it's something small. And I want to hear from you about what went wrong on your wedding day. Call me right now on 6797981. Text or WhatsApp 0877 989898. 98FM. Talks. With Des Kelly Interiors. New store now open at Belgard Road, Tala. 98FM. So no matter how well you plan your wedding day, there's always something that goes wrong. Now, it mightn't be something too serious, but after all the planning, you want nothing to go wrong. But it does. I don't think there's one wedding where nothing, where there hasn't been one thing that's gone wrong. Is there? Mm, no. Well, I'll tell you about my wedding day in a moment. But uh, yes, Adrian, on the website hitched.com, uh, which is a wedding ebso- website, uh, couples who've been married in the last few years have been posting about what went wrong on their wedding day. Now, we're not talking about something huge like uh, the bride not turning up on the altar, because I suppose that would make the day a bit of a sham, wouldn't it? Mm. If she didn't turn up. Yeah, no, I mean, that's a disaster, disaster. yeah. That's a, that's a disaster of epic proportions. So we're not talking about that, but we're talking about the little things. So they've compiled these seven things that are most likely to go wrong on your wedding day, okay? Mm-hmm. Um, so, uh, the first one is that someone from the bridal party will end up sick on the wedding day. Yeah, happens. Happens. That your best man... I was actually at a wedding. I was actually working at a wedding many, many, many years ago. Yeah. And uh, the groom, in the middle of their first dance, puked up in the middle of the floor. But believe it or not, they're saying one of the most common things to happen is that the, uh, the best man will have diarrhoea from a week of drinking before the wedding. Ooh. Right. So you wouldn't want that. Okay, hold your thoughts for a second because I want to just uh, bring in Kevin because he can't, he can't stay too long. Kevin's in Bally Farmer. Kevin, what happened on your wedding day last year? Uh, well, we got married and a big storm arrived. The beast, the beast from the from east? The, yeah, that's the one. Did it r- arrive on your wedding day? Uh, well, we were getting married on the Friday and I think the Friday was the worst day. It was, yeah. Uh, so what did, you, what, what did you do? Did it go ahead? Uh, well, we actually, our registrar couldn't make it, so we got married on the 7th instead. But we actually had the reception where most people made an effort to to make it, but a lot of people couldn't. Uh, some some of my family couldn't make it and stuff like that. So, they were snowed in. Right, so. so because of the beast from the east, you celebrated a wedding that hadn't even happened yet? Yeah, well, <laughs> we got married that day. We got a stand-in registrar. She was very good. She... She turned up for us at short notice well, from 2 o'clock that day. We got married at 4 and she found out at 2 o'clock that she was coming down to marry us and you now legally we didn't get married until four days later. Right, but, okay. Um, Th- all thanks to the beast from the east. 
Ah, oh, nightmare. And was there, was there anybody that you really wanted to be there that wasn't able to make it? Um, yeah, my oldest brother couldn't make it, unfortunately. Couldn't make it. He was, he was snowed in and bray, so... No, oh, right, OK. All right, yeah. well, it's a day you'll never forget, isn't it? Ah, uh, brilliant day, though. Yeah, well, that's what, good. what was the name of that storm, the official name? The Beast of from the East. No, but it had a storm. storm. Emma. Emma, so I'm um, just saying, do, yeah. do you have children yet? Yeah, I do, yeah. Um, I, I assume you called, if it's a girl, you called her Emma? Ah, uh, no, no, no. Oh, you'd have to. <laughs> you would, you would. You would. <laughs> no, it's a nightmare name now at the moment. So. All right, Beast from the East <laughs> ruined my wedding, although we had a great day anyway. Thanks, Kev. Um, 67979811 is our telephone number. Text or WhatsApp the programme 0877989898. In fact, here's another one on that same uh, theme. Uh, uh, I got married during the snow. It was so bad we had to postpone the whole reception. Oh, right. Uh, we wanted to get married, so we made it to the church with our families in our wellies and then back to our house for uh, a knees up. We went on honeymoon and had our reception uh, with the venue, band and photographers three weeks later. That was because of the beast from the east. OK, here are some of the other things on hitch.com that uh, can go wrong on your wedding day. Now, th- this happens at every wedding. I don't care. Every wedding this happens. Someone from the bridal party will have too much to drink and ruin the whole day. It's always an uncle called Jimmy. <laughs> Everybody has an uncle called Jimmy. Who well, my can't... uncle Jimmy behaved himself. No, he didn't. He was locked. <laughs> no, but there's always an uncle Jimmy that, that falls over the table or something like that. Um, the bride will be more than an hour late. But there's no excuse for that, is there? Um, no. Uh, weather is also a popular one. And here's, here's one as well, Adrian. I don't know if this happened at your wedding. Uh, a name will be misspelt on the wedding invites. And there's a story here about a woman who put her, uh, and I don't know how true this is, but one of her aunts was doing the reading, was one, doing one of the readings uh, during the thing. So you know you put your name on it, readings done by. Mm. And there was a typo on the missalette in the church. And instead of it saying, Aunt Mary will be doing the reading... It was another word that ends in NT. <laughs> really? <That> wasn't that. <laughs> so people... So it was a C instead of an A. It was a C instead of an A. So people opened the wedding this less. You know as they do yeah, the church? Yeah. Oh, here's Mary stepping up to do, to do the, uh, the first letter from the Romans to the apostles, okay? So she opens it and it says, the first reading will be read by Mary. <laughs> <laughs> what happened at your way, you, or the wedding you were at? Well, no, I, I'll tell you what happened at our wedding. Yeah. Um, and I forgot about this until my missus just reminded me. Uh, the day of our wedding, we got married last year on the 27th of... Well, the year before, actually, on the 27th of December. It was snowy, it was icy, it was freezing cold. Yeah. And there was no heating in the hotel. Oh, no. It was Baltic. It was freezing cold. They had a problem with their heating in the hotel, and it was freezing. Well, so uh, all, the, all the old dears in our were all complaining But you can't blame the hotel for that. No, but it was freezing. Okay. Yeah. Now, in our, in our, in our wedding, uh, I'll tell the story very briefly. We got married in the church up in the mountains in the middle of nowhere, and there was only one toilet in the back of the, the, back of the altar, and uh, the toilet broke before the uh, ceremony started, and everybody had been drinking water that day because it was in the middle of the summer in Lanzarote, and everybody throughout the whole uh, wedding ceremony was dying to go to the toilet. If you look at our wedding video, I'll have to show it to you, Adrian, all the people in the, uh, the church are sitting with their legs crossed holding their wee in for the whole ceremony. Oh, my God. Yeah. Add that to the freezing cold at our wedding and you'd have a great day. So um, you didn't have any ice in any of your drinks? You didn't need ice? <laughs> you didn't, it was that cold. <laughs> Champagne yeah. was chilled, it was, was it? freezing. Michelle is in Clondalk and you're on 98FM, Michelle. How are you? Hiya. Now, Michelle, tell me about what happened a few weeks before your wedding. Um, three weeks before my wedding, my husband was hit by a van on his motorbike and he nearly lost his leg, he nearly died. Oh my God. And yeah, so it was mad. So we had three weeks of hell before it, but he made it. He got married in a wheelchair and crutches and all, but big and cage on his leg. I assume he's okay now, is he? Yeah, yeah, it was 11 years now. All right, so he was a real soldier. He uh, managed to get there, wheelchair and all. And wheelchair, crutches and a cage on his leg, yep. But my God, that, three weeks before the wedding to be involved in a yeah. serious crash like that. Yeah, very serious, yeah. Did you, did you take out, just as a matter of interest, did you take out wedding insurance? Why no. is there such a thing? Well, there is. Someone just texted in, and I'm, I'm looking it up oh, now. Yeah, yeah, but who knew? I didn't know. No, no, did I. Um, there is such a thing. No, as... we were okay. We had to cancel our honeymoon, but um, everything else we didn't have to cancel. It was grand. But the honeymoon, the travel agents just held it, so we didn't get there until two years after because we were 20 months like getting better. So two years later, we were able to rebook it, but we just kind of 
the insurance and the flights kind of we have to get the flights back to insurance Okay, well, here you go. You should have used wedding insurance. There's a website that does it. Uh, can I give you the website? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've never, never heard of it. Well, it's called wedding insur- <laughs> weddinginsurance.ie. Yeah. And uh, they cover weddings from up to 33 quid. And um, so you can have different types of uh, insurance. So you can have insurance that will cover you up to five grand. So if the hotel burns down or whatever the case may be, you might get that yeah. back. And then you can have weather insurance that, or wedding insurance up to 10 grand. You can have wedding insurance that covers you up to 40 grand. And uh, it, it covers for... Lots of, it obviously doesn't cover if it rains on the day. Okay, you're not going to get money back. Oh, if it, you if couldn't get, take a photograph. Because you couldn't take a photograph. But it's all to do with that, like the, the, the bride or the groom-to-be having an accident a day before. Sinead is in Shank Hill. You're on 98FM. Sinead, how are you? Good, and yourself? Now, Sinead, uh, tell me what happened at your wedding. Um, the evening of the wedding, um, I went to look for me, you know, your flat shoes, so you can dance the night away. Mm-hmm. And uh, to realise, no one had brought my bag. I hadn't a stitch. Oh, right, so you literally had your wedding dress and whatever you arrived into the hotel with? Yeah, that was uh, it. Uh-oh. Right, so and we know- were in Carlo. So, we so it's not like you could home. just nip home? No, not at all. So, it was... Uh, so what did you do home. then? Well, my mum was going away on holidays the next day, so she had her suitcase. So I borrowed something off her, and my dad drove me to the local shops to buy clothes. But I literally arrived down to the breakfast the next day, looking for my mum, with no cl- in my wedding dress still. The looks I got, I'd say people thought I was still partying. But you weren't? You had nothing else no. to wear? No. Oh, nightmare. And I'm sure yeah. you had bought lovely clothes, so that you look lovely the next day? Yeah. Oh! Nothing. Everything was still at home. So you had to go to the shops and, uh, and, and buy all new no. gear? Yeah. Awful. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, you'll never forget that wedding day either, will you? No. No. Not at all. all right. Thanks, Sinead. <laughs> Cheers. Thanks. Six seven nine seven ninety eight one is our telephone number. You can text or WhatsApp the program. Oh eight seven seven ninety eight ninety eight ninety eight. My husband had salmonella, and at the wedding day, I took him out of hospital, and instead of dinner, he had uh, liquid dropping to his vein. It was not easy, but now we're laughing at it. That sounds really, really pleasant. What went wrong on your wedding day? Keep your messages coming in to us. 0877 98 98 98. 0877 98 98 98. Monica, I'm going to talk to you uh, in just a moment with a story no of what happened to your poor flower girl. Okay. Okay, we'll hear that story straight after the break. Keep your messages coming in. Uh, what happened to you on your wedding day? What went wrong? Even a small little thing, like forgetting your clothes for the next day. Disaster area. Keep your messages coming in, and we're back in just a couple of minutes. 90. Live and exclusive to 98 FM, this is Dublin Talks with Adrian Kennedy. And Trish is here with Wednesday's top headlines. Thanks, Adrian. A number of GP practices around the country will be closed today as doctors plan to protest in Dublin. They're calling for more funding for the GP care system. It comes as psychiatric nurses are staging their second overtime ban today in a row over pay and staff shortages, while nurses will strike again tomorrow. A plan to build five rapid-built homes in Temple Bar for homeless families is being abandoned. It's after the City Council was quoted construction prices of €600,000 per home. Construction was due to start this month, but the plan has been scrapped. And a suggestion to build a tunnel under a future College Green Plaza has been shot down. It's after one councillor said building the tunnel could solve the traffic issues. The Council Chief Executive Owen Keegan has said it wouldn't be practical. And now you're up to date on 98. 98. 98 FM's Dublin Talks. Dublin Talks with Adrian Kennedy. Good morning. This is 98 FM's Dublin Talks. I'm Adrian Kennedy. We're here until midday today. I hope everything is good with you. Our telephone number is 67979981. 67979981. You can text or WhatsApp the program 0877 989898. 0877989898. Now we're talking about wed- wedding disaster stories. And we all have one, even if it's just a small little thing. We all have a wedding disaster story. Monica, tell me what happened to your flower girl. <laughs> my poor flower girl got the measles on the morning of my wedding. And we 
Like we were down in the hairdressers getting her hair done and the hairdresser says to us, oh, she said, she's got a flash kind of, you know, behind her ear. So it was a really, really hot day. So we thought maybe it was just, you know, the excitement. She was only about six or seven. I can't remember what age she was. But um, as we were there then, like, you know, it just kept developing more and more and more. And then through the day, it just kept getting worse and worse. And God love her. She made it through kind of till around the meal time and she just was in bits and afterwards you know it was so funny we keep talking about it now every now and again it'll come up oh do you remember when Paula had some measles the day of our wedding yeah nah. didn't, ruin the, didn't ruin the day but it did for her I it suppose. did of course for her yeah. She, had been, yeah she had been looking forward to it but she she made through a, a big part of it you know before she got really kind of sick because she had it really bad that she was absolutely covered she was covered. God ah, love her. God love her. <laughs> all right. Well, yeah, you'll always remember, she'll always remember that day for all the oh, wrong absolutely. reasons. Absolutely. What, what, what age was she? She was, I think she was about six or seven. I'm not 100% sure. I can't remember now. If I say, if I say she's older now than she is, she'd kill me. So I'm not sure. But she was about, yeah, she was about six or seven. So, yeah, yeah. That's oh, a lovely dear. story. All right, yeah, very good. Absolutely. Th- thanks all very right. much indeed, Monica. Okay, thanks, and thanks. let me just um, bring in one more call. And Edward is in Rialto. You're on 98 FM. Edward, how are you? How you doing? Not so bad. Now, Edward, um, tell me about your wedding. What happened? Right. I uh, got married there in August. And uh, we were at the, going into the, into the reception and that, and we were talking to the wedding coordinator. So she was asking us whether we get married on a Friday or a Saturday. So she said, you know what a wedding. So we said, you know what, we make it a weekend wedding. We were at the, 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 the wedding day, and then the next day we booked the meal in for 100 people, the whole lot. So the wedding went great. Next morning, we got a knock on the door at the, at our at room. We had to leave the room, and 40 of our guests that booked in for the whole weekend had to leave the rooms that they were at the booking in a wedding at the last minute. No. And it was out of our, yeah, our little love nest there, and that, you know, on the next morning after our wedding, after booking the whole thing for the weekend. So it was a bit of a disaster. That is, uh, that's unbelievable, yeah. And it's yeah. One, of, one of those things that you just can't plan for. You can plan everything for the wedding, but when something like that goes wrong, there's nothing you can do about it. Well, that's it. Like, um, after the coordinator telling us that, actually, you have the whole weekend now, you've got to book in the, 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 the three course meal for the next day, and the whole lot said everything is grand, there won't be any other weddings. And then to be taken out of the out of our room, and, that, and we were thrown into another one. And then 40 guests then had to leave to compliment the, the next wedding's guests, like, if you get me. It's crazy, all right, you know. But you see, and, and, and that is part of the problem. Some hotels take on more, bite off more than they can chew. They, yeah, um, yeah, and they they overbook and they oversell, and you've literally one wedding party coming into the hotel on top of the other wedding party. And it, and it, uh, exactly, it, it, it yeah. can be a bit of a mess, all right. Uh, they offered us a meal, anyways. Jesus, they offered us a meal, and, 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 you know, to, to say sorry. That's what we got. As a matter of interest, did, did you get? I'm, I'm wondering if this is something that just our hotel offers or other hotels offered because we did it the other day they uh, which I thought was a really nice touch they uh, offer you um, um, an anniversary your first anniversary stay in the hotel and uh, a meal and breakfast and all that yeah yeah we got that as well which yeah. I thought was a really we, nice touch we were down uh, we got married in the bridge house in Tullamore last year and we were down there last weekend and uh, we had a great night so I thought it was a lovely I touch I mention where I got married just no, no, yeah exactly <laughs> right. good man thanks very much right, thanks. Uh, we were in the late bar with uh, other residents staying at the hotel says uh, this message um, when we went up to change into our going away outfits my husband got sick all over my wedding dress Guinness Oh, my husband got drunk with the lad staying at the hotel he ended up sleeping in the bar on our wedding night Oh, I'd say he was popular for a long time um, Artane next Patricia you're on 98 FM hiya Patricia Hi, Adrian. That was just my message. Oh, that was your message, was it? Yeah, but there was more involved also. Um, There was nearly a fight on the day because what happened was the people, our guests at the wedding, when they went up to get a few drinks, they said that um, some of them were drinking vodka, that their drinks were being diluted. They weren't getting their their full drinks. And there was nearly a fight up at the bar where they were nearly pulling the barman over the counter because it was something like, it was a fair bit of money for a a vodka and whatever they were having beers and their drink was diluted. And we see the crowd all gathering around the bar. We went over to investigate and um, 
it was the, what you call it, the guests were all giving out saying that they weren't getting their proper measures. Really? Yeah. Oh. And then the manager was called and all this. And But then, yeah, like I said, we went up to change into our going away outfit and he was after having a few bottles of, or a few pints of Guinness. And the uh, next minute he got so sick. He just, before I knew what was happening, I was all down the front of my wedding dress. And then, um, like I said, we went away anyway to the place we were staying in because we were flying out the next day. And there was a, a lad sat a stag in the hotel we were staying in overnight. And he got into it. He's all into He looks in a good old sing song and he's a great old singer. And he got in and he, he was having a sing song with him. And I was sitting with the lads too for a while. But then I said, I'll go upstairs and uh, I'll see you in a while. I said, yeah. And uh, in there, uh, and then it was laid out cold, and a few of the lads on the sofas in the bar, and they were all out cold for the night. So he spent the wedding night down there in the bar. Wow! I'd say he was popular. <laughs> and do you still throw it at him? How long ago was that? Uh, five years ago. Do you still throw ago. it at him? Uh, it's funny when we look back now. It wasn't funny at the time. I'd say you, now, uh, you I'd, I'd say the next yeah. day you hardly spoke to him, did you? Uh, it's like you say, we were flying off, and um, what you call on the holidays next day. So. You put it behind you. Yeah, uh, well, you had to. You had to forget. It, I'm just trying good. to envisage what would have happened if I'd have done that at our wedding. I, 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 I think <laughs> I think she would have sought an annulment straight away. <laughs> but anyway, all right, good to talk to you, Patricia. Thanks very okay, much indeed. Bye bye. Um, a couple more messages. The hotel I got married in closed down the week after my wedding. It went into liquidation. We were very uh, lucky, but others, unfortunately, uh, weren't so lucky. Don't say my name, please says this message. Well, you didn't put your name on it, so I don't know how I could actually say your name. But anyway, uh, the night before my wedding, my divorced husband's sister. My divorced husband's sister. I don't understand that. My divorced husband's sister rang my mother to say, he's a mammy's boy, it's not going to work. She was right. Oh, sorry, we're now divorced, are we? All right, okay. So on the day, my now divorced husband's sister rang my mother to say, he's a a mammy's boy, it's not going to work. (laughs) She was right. Yeah, okay. Uh, Adrian, I had the whole princess-style wedding day. On the morning of the last minute, I got a call to say uh, the horse had dropped dead on the way out. No horse and carriage for me. The groom's car had to be uh, sent up, which led me to uh, be over an hour late. But 18 years later, we're still uh, good. And one last one. I was going to Cork for a wedding. When I got there, I forgot my uh, dresses so frantic, I wanted to drive back to Dublin to get them. Instead, went to a shopping centre and got some new clothes, then went for a coffee after all the stress, left the coffee shop walking down the street, this woman running after me saying, I left my shopping bag in in the shop. Second time that I forgot my clothes. All right, thanks very much indeed for all of your calls, comments, texts and opinions. Live from Dublin City Centre, this is Adrian Kennedy and this is 98FM's Dublin Talks. Now, next on the programme, a topic that, well, very rarely gets discussed in the media. How couples, and in particular women, are judged by society for not wanting to have children. When you hear of a woman saying, I don't want kids, never did, have absolutely no interest whatsoever, what do you think? Do you think it's her choice or a selfish attitude? Well, the editor of a uh, top magazine, Cosmopolitan actually, a lady called Farah Storr, has uh, spoken out about uh, this week about how she gets judged because she and her husband decided that they didn't want a baby. She said, One night as my husband and I sat watching TV, I leaned against his arm, looked at him and said, I'm not sure I want to start a family. He looked at me, kissed me on the forehead and replied, I'm so glad you've said that because neither am I. So they discovered at that moment that uh, neither of them wants uh, children. And 
It raised the whole issue. Of course, she says, of course, my husband and I talk about our child-free existence all the time. Spare bedrooms have been converted into offices and dressing rooms. Two giant dogs have become the recipients of our affection. She says, we have made peace uh, with the fact that friends our age with young families are too uh, busy uh, to see us. Being child-free makes you incredibly well-organised. She says, I have uh, tried to plug gaps where there was uh, once a child-shaped hole. Uh, My weekends are now given over to gardening. While I make sure I do uh, the things not having children has freed up my time to do, like travel, write a book or volunteer. So basically she believes that you can have a wonderfully fulfilled life without having children and uh, that there are other things to fill the gap. And I have a question to ask you. When you hear of a couple, and we're we're not talking about a couple who for medical reasons can't have uh, children, or who maybe have tried IVF and have failed. We're talking about couples who choose not to have children, who make the choice not to have children. What do you think when you hear of uh, couples who do not want children? Do you think they're selfish? And we had this conversation in the office earlier on. And I won't name names, but certain people in our office said, oh my God, why would a woman not want to have a child? It is so selfish. That's what we were put on this earth for. And I'm like, really? And you see, I can see it from both sides now. Yes, I have my kids uh, and they're grown up now. And I can see the freedom that having grown up children gives you. We can do what we want now. We can go on holidays when we feel like it. We don't have to think about anybody else. So I can see the other side of the coin. I'd love to hear from you on this on 67979081. Text or WhatsApp your opinion to us. 0877989898. Liz is in Carlo and you're on 98FM, Liz. How are you? Hi, good morning. Good morning, Liz. How are you getting on? Good, not a bother. Now, Liz, you decided at a young age that you didn't want children. Yep, very young age. I was approximately 10. Really? Um, Yeah, I had a very clear decision. I didn't want to have children from the age of 10. Um, And at the same time... That's a very young age to make that decision, isn't it? Yeah. Um, You can see it as a young age, but um, I have my reasons behind that. And at the same time, I actually made a very conscious decision that I wanted to work with children. Um, and I've spent my, I'm now in my early 40s and I've spent my whole life looking after other people's children and still no desire to have my own. Still no desire to have your own? No. No. And I'm curious as to know why. I don't, if you don't want to share the reasons, that's fine, but... Oh, I, I, don't, I don't mind at all. Um, I didn't have the easiest of childhoods and I didn't have the best of parents. And I made a very conscious decision that I didn't want to risk inflicting a generational... Um, hurt through onto a child that I would give birth to. Now that was that was where I was at for many years um, in my decision making. That I I felt that I ne- wouldn't necessarily be a great parent, so I made the decision not to be a parent, and then to then u- use my career life to fulfil my maternal instinct and look after other people's children and to be able to um, bring some positivity and to bring some niceness into their life, where you know possibly their home lives weren't. Great. Okay, um, no, I, I, that, that, that seems a reason. But bearing in mind your, as you describe yourself, your not-so-happy childhood, would that not inspire you to want to bring a child into the world to give them the happy childhood that perhaps you didn't have? No, 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 not for me, because I, I grew up in my teenage years and in my early 20s with many comments from, from particularly from women, saying, you'll, you'll turn out like your mother. You turn into your mother. This comment of you'll turn into your mother, that steered me away. Really? Co- yes, that most definitely, because I wouldn't want to be a mother like my mother was. I wouldn't want to wish that on a child. So I had that comment given to me repeatedly saying that I would, you know, you turn into your mother. Uh, now, they do say up. that, but I would have thought that with that sort of background, it would make you determined not to turn into your mother. 
Well, it, it could do, but it could swing both ways. And I wasn't prepared to take that risk on an, on an innocent child. And what sort of reaction have you gotten from people to, you know, over the years? Uh, you're in your 40s now, I believe. Um, what sort of, have, have people ever judged you for deciding not to have children? Um, I've discussed it with many people because I do want to crash. And obviously I'm dealing with parents and parenting a lot. So, um, you know, part of it is the parents of my crash, as they come, will want to know a bit about my life. And I say I don't have children and you get this kind of bewildered, shocked look. And I'm like, but I fulfill my maternal instinct here. I don't need to do the sleepless nights, the teething, the bottle feeding, any of this, but my maternal instincts are fulfilled. And I feel I can give so much more into the children I mind by not being a parent, I can't imagine being a mother and being as good as I am with the children I work with. So I have had some, you know, kind of bewildered looks. I wouldn't necessarily say judgment. However, I'm currently studying a degree course as well, um, which involves a lot of discussion and personal development. And I'm very open with this decision, and I've always been very open with this decision. And what it actually brought in a room of 14, 14 people and one male, so 13 women, Four women came out and said, thank you very much for being so open. I'm actually one of these women too that doesn't want to have children. And I've given them the confidence to be able to to think that that's an okay decision. There's a lot more women out there that are not wanting children but are afraid to say it because of the judgment. And these other four women in my class of 13 women, four women came and said, thank you so much because they didn't have the confidence to say it. They, they didn't feel so alone in their decision-making because it's kind of put on to us that you'll become a mum. You know, what do we do with little girls? We buy them a doll. I had one doll when I was a child. I buried it. Right. So, I, you know, I was, never to be a, I was never to be a mother, and that's fine, and I'm, I have absolutely no regrets. And no, there is no one that can judge me on that because it's a decision I've made for my life that affects only me. And I'm very, very open about it. And there's a lot more women out there that probably don't want children and are possibly very afraid to say that, but they shouldn't be. All right, do me a favour. Stay in the line there for one second, please. 6797981 is our telephone number. You can text or WhatsApp us on 0877 98 98 98. We're talking about... Um, how people, and particularly women, but couples as well, who decide not to have children and how they are judged by society for that. A lot of people think it's such a selfish thing to not want children. Now, you've heard Liz's reasons. That's why she doesn't um, want children. I'll be hearing from another woman straight after the break who says it's her decision and that there's too much pressure on women nowadays by society. I'll talk to her after the break and I'd love to hear from you. 6797981 is our telephone number. Text or WhatsApp 0877 98 98 98. 98 FM. Dublin Talks. With Dev Kelly Interiors. New store now open at Belgard Road, Tala. 98 FM. And this is Adrian Kennedy with you until uh, midday today. Our telephone number is 67979981. You can text or WhatsApp uh, 0877 98 98 98. I think, says uh, this message, uh, that it is selfish to not want to have children. I'd give anything to have a baby. In fact, I have given every penny trying um, because I'm constantly asked, um, when am I going to have uh, a baby, even as far as telling me my time is running out. So there's somebody who desperately wants a child but can't have a child, has spent all the money they have on on attempting to have a child, and she does believe that it is selfish for people to decide not to have uh, children. Liz, let me just come back to you for one second on on that message. Um, So here's a woman who would give anything to have a child, and she can't believe that somebody who could have a child chooses not to. Well, firstly, I'm very, very sorry for that lady. If she really wants a child and is unable, I'm very sorry for... What's, what she's having to go through because I can imagine how hard that is to want a child but that doesn't make me selfish that doesn't make me I can't I can't do anything for that lady I, can't, I shouldn't have a child just because that lady can't that, that doesn't make any rational to me at all um, but, and that doesn't make me selfish to her I'm very sorry for her but I can't change her situation by having a child mm. myself that just doesn't make sense all right, stay there for a second. Let me go to Kim. Kim, you're on 98FM. How are you? Hiya, how are you? 
Kim, your point on this is that it's your decision and nobody else's. Well, yeah, definitely, because it's you that's changing your whole life for this child. If you're going to have a child and then you don't really want them, like, do you know what I mean? You're not going to put your all into something that you're not passionate about. Okay, and, and what's your situation? Do you have children? Yeah, I actually have a little girl myself. Right. And so, well, like, I, I had her young or whatever, but I wouldn't go out and have another child because I don't think I'd be... Do you know, I wouldn't sacrifice what I have for her for another child. So I do see the point of people not wanting to change their life for kids. <sighs> Okay, so obviously when you have a child, you're never going to say, well, I'd prefer not to have her. Um, yeah, definitely. But if somebody makes that decision not to have a child, you can completely understand it. Yeah, completely. My sister's in the same boat, and she has a niece and a nephew, and she's decided she never wants to have children. But I totally get where she come, where she's coming from, because she sees how hard it is to have a child, and she just, you know, she feels like she wouldn't be emotionally capable to have a child. You know, so why should she have one just because maybe she's 30 and she's the right age or she should, but yet emotionally not be there for the child? Yeah, no, I get that. Um, and I, I mean, I do think that there are people who have children that probably shouldn't have had children yeah. um, and should have made the choice not to have children because they're, yeah. they're just not suitable parents. Um, and, you know, that has to be, you know, somebody who, the lady who sent that message in to me a moment ago, that has to be very upsetting to her as yeah, well. Totally. That there are people bringing kids into the world that aren't it fit to... It must be upsetting for her to feel like yeah, people... The, you, you know, know some aren't. people aren't fit to have a doll, let alone a child. So yeah, it has to be very frustrating for them as well. Um, Ari is in Kilkenny. You're on 98 FM. How are you? How are you? Now, um, you also don't want children. No, I much prefer my canine companion. <laughs> and what age are you? I'm 19. Oh, you're only 19? Yeah. You see, some people would say, as you're only a young one, um, the maternal instinct will kick in eventually. Yeah, I have had people turn around and say that to me. So I actually turned around and wrote a poem about it because I was getting pretty sick. Um, oh, you're getting like, pretty sick with people giving it, having an opinion on it? Well, people telling me that I'm wrong, that really? I don't want kids, and or that I do want kids. And I'm kind of like, no, in this, state of mind and where I am in life I actually don't see myself having children nor do I have the want to have kids Okay but, uh, but this argument that well you're only 19 um, you will in time, no you're saying, absolutely no I'm open to if I change my mind maybe I will but at this moment in time I don't see why people have the right to turn around and tell me that I do want kids nor do I want them myself like I just, I never see myself having a child Okay, so you're just you, not part of my life plan. This bothers you enough that you wrote a poem about it. Yeah. Have you got it there? I yes, I do. Can you read it to me? Yes. Um, this is basically <laughs> my statement, I suppose. Um, when I tell you I do not want children, you do not have the right to t tell me I am wrong. You may say that I am too young. I'll change my mind, but. Um, you may say I am too young I'll change my mind but I want to live a life just for me to be selfish if that's what you wish to call it this is my statement when I tell you I don't want kids you'll say when I meet the right man I'll change my mind but the right man will understand that this womb will not hold a child the right man will understand that this is by choice the right man will see me as a person not as a vessel like church and the government believe I am. When women tell doctors, we don't want children, we ask, can we get our tubes tied? We are told we are too young despite having bared enough already. We are told that we are, sorry, we are asked why would we deny our husbands despite not being a slave? We are told we'll change our mind despite being 40 and done with bleeding for no point. When women are seen as mothers without will or want to be, our young girls will not grow up to be the best you'll ever see. So when us women tell you we don't want children, it is our bodies and our bodies are not up for discussion. Wow. Written by a 19-year-old. Yeah. Well, I was 18. Oh, <laughs> even better. So... This is this is something you've really decided on. You do not want children. Yeah. And 
do you think I mean some people describe it as being selfish do you think you're going to miss out on anything or do you think you're going to dig yourself into such a hole that you'll have to stick by it I don't think I'll have to stick by it because women have the possibility to change their mind like any man can Mm. You know, I mean, it is a choice, and at this moment in time, I'm choosing not to have children. That's just not what I want. But in terms of it being considered selfish, I consider that to be a very rude term to other women. Mm. And I can understand the previous texter's comment of that she does want kids, and she's been trying very hard. And I do empathize with that woman. But me having children is not going to change her situation. You know, I mean, why should I change my mind and change what I want to do in life? Because she can't have kids. I mean, if I could have a child for her, I would. You know, but it's just, I don't want to rear one. No, and, and you seem very certain about it, which, like I said, for, you know, for a young woman, it seems like a very strong decision to make, but it. it is it that you you don't think you have a maternal instinct or is it that you want to go and live your life without um, without having to worry about a child? I or- do definitely have a maternal instinct and I can see that in my line of work. I work in canine care and I see a dog in distress and I want to help it. You know, that's I want to be a dog trainer. So I see a dog with a problem and I want to help and care and love for this animal. But... It's just, I want to do that. I mean, there's a reason I didn't go into childcare, is I didn't have that same want to mind children as I do with animals. Fascinating. Stay there for a second, Ari. 67979081 is our telephone number. You can text or WhatsApp the programme 0877 98, 98, 98. John, you're on 98FM. How are you, John? Good morning, Aidan. How are you doing? Good, thank you, John. What did you want to say on this? Well, I just sent a text from there saying that women just please themselves and they couldn't give a talk to their children. And this recent referendum on abortion proves that point right down to Well, it wasn't just women who voted in that now, in fairness, John. Yeah, well, the, the majority of the women came out and said, look, we want to put these uh, unborn children in the buckets and what have you, so there you go. So it wasn't... So if these women now who say that, you know, you don't want children, yeah, there's a lot of them out there. We just don't want children, and I have to say, this abortion referendum and just proves that women just please themselves, they couldn't give a toss about anybody else. And that's the way society's gone with women. Okay, if a woman, and we're, we're primarily talking about women, although it, it can yeah. be couples yeah, as yeah. well who make the decision that they don't want to have uh, children, um, what, is, what is wrong with that? What, how is that selfish? It would be selfish in the sense that if a man and a woman got married, and let's say a man wanted to have a child, and the woman said, no, I'm not having it, no, it's my body, do it, like, blah, 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 I couldn't give a talk to you. That's where the selfish part comes in. Because when you're married, you're two people together, and you make decisions together. But women now are coming to this, I don't, this feminazi way of looking at things, you know, my body, this is, I'm a woman, and I can do it, and I can say what I want, I can do what I like, and my way or the highway. And I think that's where the selfishness comes in. If another partner wants to have a child and the woman says, no, I'm just not doing it. That's where the selfishness comes into it. But is it, not, it? is it not down to an individual to decide for themselves? Well, you see, at the end of the day, Aidan, as somebody pointed out at the beginning of your conversation there, the women are put on this planet, and men, to, you know, to create the next future man and woman. That's the primary... That's the primary... Well, that's our, that's uh, our sole purpose on Earth. That's the, that's the, you know, that's the biological function of human beings, is to, you know, have children for the, you know, to, to, for the next generation. And I know what's happening in society today, this liberal society, is women are saying, no, we're not going to have a child today. I don't want to have a child. So in future generations, we're not going to have children. It's going to be a very big problem for this planet as it goes forward. Because there's a lot more uh, women out there Taking this attitude now, call it selfish, call it what you like, I think it's selfish, in certain circumstances, and to, uh, they're basically saying, no, I don't want to have a child. Um, and at the end of the day, this is going to have uh, consequences for future generations of this planet, country and everybody else. 
All right, stay there for one second, John. Six seven nine seven ninety eight one is our telephone number. Let me play this WhatsApp me- uh, voice message, which is directed at you. Just a message for John there. Surely, be- uh, before you get married, a couple will will talk about having kids. It's not when you when you get married that you discuss having kids. So he's talking absolute harsh shit again. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, yeah. Angela, you're on ninety eight FM. Hi, Angela. Hi. How are you? Good. Jesus, thank you. The man just took the words right out of my mouth. <laughs> like if if you are um, in a relationship you're engaged and you're getting married you suddenly don't turn around when there's a ring on your finger and go oh by the way don't want to have kids I mean Jesus and he just seems like an absolute ignorant woman hater is what he is because everything he has said there is women women brought in abortion women brought this women brought that they should be stuck to the kitchen sink they should be that's what we're here for I'm sorry I can't have kids now I'm looking at it now going if I had had a child would I be able to do everything that I could have I doubt it but I can't have them so what's wrong with me am I on the scrap heap now you know you're saying that's what we're putting the planet for John so if I'm putting the planet to have kids and I can't have kids what happens to me now well, you see, that's different because that's not a choice. That's it's something that you've no but, choice yes, in. Yes, I know. But you see, this is his thing. This is where the ignorance of it comes in. Like, it is a choice for a lot of people, you know, and who to say that I didn't want, that I would have made the choice that I didn't want to have them. And I do know women who don't want to have them. But you can't turn around and say that they're feminazi or they're selfish because they don't want to have kids. What is wrong with that? That's a choice that a well, one woman of the point, Okay, one of the points Sean made is it's one of the primary reasons we're put on earth. Well, it is one of the primary, but not everyone is, you know, like, geez, how many millions of years ago was that like? Cop on, things change. People change. You know, you don't see him turning out and crit- criticising men who don't want to have kids. You know? I know it's about a woman's choice here this morning, but he's not turning around and saying, oh, well, men voted for abortion. You know, men don't want to have kids. It's all about the woman with him. He's just an ignorant man who hates women for some reason. John, what do you say to that, that you're an ignorant man? Well, well, thank you very much for letting me back in. First and foremost, I don't hate women because she's full of shit. I'm talking about previous message you wrote out out there. Uh, you had on the radio. The fact sorry, uh, uh, is, uh, John, I'm really no, sorry. No, 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 no. Let me just cut across you for one second. I'm going to get the lads to you back because your phone is extremely muffled and it's very, very difficult to hear you. So, lads, can you ring John back and see if we can get a, um, a clearer line, please? Because it's very muffled and very hard. I'm not, I'm not deliberately cutting him off. But, um, yeah. uh, sorry, Angela. I mean, the bottom line is that you believe it's personal choice. Simple it as that. It's personal choice. There are some women out there who just don't feel a maternal instinct, who don't want to have children, who feel that they couldn't raise a child, that they couldn't do it. And why are they called selfish because of that? It's like, okay, I would understand if people turn around and say that they're selfish, that they had an abortion. People are, you know, are entitled to that kind of thing, you know, to, to that kind of choice. But before you even um, have a child, then... And that's the choice you want to make them. Why not? Let them make that choice. I'm not saying everything is the woman and everything is about choice with women. You know, it's not. But okay, uh, let, let, me, let, let me bring John back in. Have we got you on a slightly yeah. clearer line, John? Can you hear me now, Angel? Yeah, it's just very muffled. But anyway, go on, yeah. Okay, I'll go on. So, first and foremost, uh, well, I can hear myself, so. Um, first and foremost, that lady's talking shite. I'm not against women, but I will say that this society is anti child and women are anti-children in this society, and the referendum on the bottom uh, clearly proves that. If a man and a woman does talk about having a child before and during the relation, uh, you know, a marriage, so to say that you just talk about it beforehand is a load of bollocks, basically. The fact, uh, sorry for the language. But women and men will talk about children during a marriage as well. And the, fact, the point I made was, if a man wants to have a child and a, does, and a woman doesn't want to have a child, that's selfish on her behalf. Again, if it was a man who said he didn't want to have a child and a woman said she had it, if she wanted to have a child, it would be selfish on the man's part. So no, I'm balanced in my approach to this conversation. Not against women or this shite that these feminists go on about. So that's my uh, answer to it. And to that previous message you sent out as well there, it was uh, basically women are the anti-children in this society today. And you just have to look at the abortion referendum to see that. 
All right, a message just came in and it says, that John fell is off his head. Women can do what they want with their bodies. So uh, if you're with a woman that does not want kids, leave her. Um, simple. <laughs> I suppose you can if you, if you, uh, if you want. Um, 67979811 is our telephone number. You can text or WhatsApp the program on 0877 98, 98, 98. Here's another WhatsApp voice message, I think, directed to John as well. And also to John there as well. It doesn't matter if people, couples, decide they don't want to have children anymore. The, the fact of the matter is there's too many people on the planet anyway. So... So be it. If there's no more children coming in in the next uh, five years, it doesn't really matter. We don't fit on the planet anyway. That's a fair point, John. We have too many human beings on planet Earth as it is. Oh, maybe so, but the future generation is going to be affected because there's going to be no more children born. Well, no, so I mean, we're, 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 not, we're, we're not running short of people anytime soon. Um, and we yeah. do, um, maybe not in a country like Ireland, but certainly on the planet, we are overpopulating the planet. So if, 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 if a few more people, it's never going to be everybody. If a few more people choose not to have children, well, then um, the the world will benefit, will it not? No, people die. And I mean, if, if there's nothing there to replace that person who dies, we're going to have a shortfall in future generations. All right, let me just bring in uh, one last call on this, and that is um, to, to, to Brian. You're on 98 FM. How are you, Brian? How's it going, Adrian? Good, thank you, Brian. What do you want to say on this? Um, that stuff, the man John was beyond all the time. Just, it's always about the abortion referendum and about women. He is against women completely. He was on before himself saying he doesn't have children. And um, he says he doesn't have children himself. So does that make him selfish? Do you know what I mean? And now, what, what if the man wants a child and the woman doesn't, and the woman has a child to keep the man happy? What then? Yeah, and I, I do believe that that there are situations where, you know, one half of a couple will will go ahead and have a child, not against the other's wishes, but without the full support of the other. Yeah, and he's saying that this generation, we don't care about children, and we just throw children aside. This generation has brought in more legislation to protect children than any other generation in Ireland. The last two generations in Ireland abused children. So what he's talking there is crap, you know what I mean? It's not actual fact. We had a referendum, the children's referendum to give kids even more rights. That's very true, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right, I, I, I have to say, an awful lot of uh, an awful lot of people are reacting to um, to what John is saying. But he wouldn't be alone. But well, actually, on, the, on, on, on this occasion, he actually is alone. But uh, people do judge when uh, a, a woman or a couple decide they don't want children. People do but think it's really, selfish. We have a couple of friends of ours, and they're a couple, and they don't want children. And they've said it for the last five, six years. Look, me and me, missus have two kids. We're going, we're going away to Spain this year for two weeks with the kids. They, may get the, they go to New York every year. They go to Vegas. They start going everywhere. They're living their lives. Mm. They're happy. If they don't want kids, if they're happy and content with the way they are, so be it. This is and like, like I said do. earlier on, I can kind of see it from both sides now. And in that I, I've had my kids. Uh, they're grown up now. And... Yeah, when you when you when your kids are younger, it does restrict what you can do and holidays you can go on. You can't do that, and you're a taxi yeah. driver. Yeah, well, basically, yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. But then, but now that they're grown up, I can do what I want when I want, how I want, and I, yeah. so I can see both sides. Oh, yeah, like sometimes we said we're friends. Like, oh, like we were on that boat. Like, oh Jesus, we have a house, she's have together, we just not have children, and they basically said it to us. Ah, no. And sometimes we look at them going. Oh, jeez, I wish I was going to Vegas with them. We haven't got the money because we have two kids. You know what I mean? They can go out and do what they want. They mm. still have a house and a mortgage. They can still do what they want. Live their life really. Still enjoy yourselves. We have another 10 years to wait before they can do that. You know what I mean? All right. Um, let me read a couple more of your uh, messages. If a female got pregnant and her fellow wanted to keep it and she wanted to get rid of it, the, the baby is as good as go- gone. Uh, we need equal rights. I assume this is... Um, yeah, OK. I, I, I take the point that men should be able to uh, have a say. And one last call, and that's you, Michael. You're on 98FM. How are you, Michael? Not bad, Hayden. How are you? Michael, your point is that we, we need to look after the kids that are here now, let alone bringing more into the world. 
That's it. We're not short of people at the moment, Adrian. And 100 million children will go without clean water today and tomorrow and the next day until we have this issue sorted. So having the choice to have kids or not have kids is up to yourself, you know what I mean? I mean, obviously it is a choice, but what I heard, and you heard that that uh, young woman who wrote the poem uh, saying that even at 19, people are saying yeah. to her, ah, you'll change your mind, ah, you'll change yeah, your mind. If you get on the show, find a 19-year-old now that wants to have kids. At no. 19, I didn't want to have kids. No, of course not, but... Uh, she's, Nobody wants to have kids at 19. The, the way she was talking, this is a, a life decision. This is a decision that she has made, and no, that's it. No, no, no 19 has ever made a life decision. No I, I disagree. In fact, the woman that we started this conversation with said she knew from the age of seven that she didn't want children. Yeah, well, speech to her own, what did you say? You know what I mean? Well, education, uh, education and water is, is much more important right now than, you know what I mean, just bringing kids into the world because you can do it. You know what I mean? Hmm. All right, we have enough children as it is, um, and we don't need to be bringing any more into the world. Uh, so maybe more people should decide not to have uh, children, says uh, um, that message. And finally, having fewer children is a bad thing in the sense that we will have an increasing aging population with a higher proportion of retirees in relation to working people, resulting in a strain on the state pension, as well as less resources for looking after older people. Well, I think we already have that, actually to be quite honest with you. Anyway, thank you very much indeed uh, for all of your calls. This is 98 FM's Dublin Talks. I'm Adrian Kennedy. We're with you until midday today. Now, today, tomorrow and the next day, we are running a competition where we are giving you the opportunity to make up for years of being the worst Valentine in Dublin. In other words, you never remember the card. You never remember the flowers. You never do anything. You never take her or him away for a weekend. Not even a present. Nothing. You're just the worst Valentine in Dublin. Well, if you are that person... We have a competition that you're going to love. I'll explain all about it after the break. We're going to be talking to uh, a couple of people who are putting themselves forward as Dublin's worst Valentine in the hope of winning a lovely prize for a night in the Radisson Blue Hotel uh, in uh, Dublin city centre on Valentine's night. We'll be talking to a few of our contestants after the break. 98 FM Dublin Talks with Des Kelly Interiors. New store now open at Belgard Road, Tala. 98 FM. This is Adrian Kennedy with you until midday today. And Jeremy is here uh, to explain to you. Sorry. Yes. Cupid. Thanks. Cupid, oh yeah, yeah Cupid, Cupid Dixon uh, is here with us to uh, explain about a competition that we're running all of this week in association with the Radisson Blue Hotel on Golden Lane. It's just around the corner from us here at the radio station. Okay, how this came to our mind is because we, we came across figures there a couple of weeks ago that said that the majority of men, now this is men, the majority of men leave their Valentine present buying till the last day. Which is you, Adrian. Yep. I just see you on, 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 on Valentine's Day yeah, every shut up, year. Shut up. No, no, legging it down. Be Grafton. careful. Legging it down Grafton Street. She's Jesus, listening. what do I... But she knows you leave she it to the last minute. Does, yeah. And you, you're not alone. I leave it to the last minute as well. So we decided to come up with a with a competition and to make it easy for people. And it's not just men. I, I assume some women uh, forget to buy their partner's Valentine's presents. So these, this is for people who are hopeless... Uh, Valentine's people uh, people who always forget to get presents you end up buying them ridiculous presents so if you are a hopeless romantic this will appeal to you because we want to make it easy for you um, basically to get in your partner's good books for Valentine's Day isn't that right Adrian? that's right yep and everybody wants to stay in a lovely romantic hotel on Valentine's night don't they well, why not? Yeah. yeah, get the kids babysat. If you have kids, get yep. them babysat. And maybe take the next day off work or do what Adrian does, pull a sickie, uh, fall sickie. I've only done that once in my entire life. It was after Anyhow, Valentine's Day. Yes, so we are looking for the biggest Valentine's disaster area. Basically, and what we're going to do is then we're going to we're going to pick two lucky people, uh, and what I'm going to do, I'm going to get dolled up as Cupid. Uh, what does Cupid wear? He's um, uh, naked he's a with an arrow and a nappy. Okay, we didn't think that one through. <laughs> okay, I'm not going to dress up as Cupid, but on Valentine's Day, live on 98 FM during Dublin Talks, I am going to call to two people, either their place of work or, or their home, wherever you happen to be, between 10 and 12 on Valentine's Day, and I'm going to give your partner, who never gets anything from you, mm -hmm. I'm going to give them something very, very special. 
I'm going to fire my little arrow from Cupid's bow and give you a lovely night away in a hotel on Valentine's night. Okay, so over the next couple of days, we're going to be talking to a couple of hopeless romantics, brutal romantics, really, um, and they'll all go into a draw, and we will pick two people next weekend um, who are going to be staying in the Radisson Blue Hotel in Golden Lane next Valentine's Day, which is next is Wednesday, I think. Um, the fact you, that you don't even know the day. Yeah, uh, exactly. Get the presents. Uh, you'll have um, dinner in the elegant V&V restaurant where executive chef Tommy Butler has created a special Valentine's Day menu. In other um, words, in other words, this prize that we will give you on 98 FM will make up for the last 10 years that you forgot uh, their Valentine's Day. Exactly. All right, uh, so let's talk to a couple of people who've already entered the competition. Uh, Barry is first. Barry, you're on 98 FM. How are you, Barry? How's it going? Barry, you are a bit of a disaster area. You've been with uh, your other half uh, for how long? 14 years. 13 years, okay. And in that 13 years... It says here that you've never done anything for Valentine's Day. No. Nothing? No, 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 no. I think it's, a, it's not a great day for the ones. Like, you shouldn't need a day like that for showing your affection, you know what I mean? And I just think they'll waste the time of the day. So, have you ever That's given her a card? Um, I think once in the last couple of years I did, yeah. Once? And yeah. What, what made you do that? You happened to be in the shop and they happened to be beside you? I was a constant nagging I was getting, but now she's just used to it at this stage. Right, so you, you bought her one card once, and that, that's that been it? That's been pretty much it, yeah. <laughs> I like to try to re-gift it, like, you know what I mean, every year. <laughs> <laughs> so you've never taken her out for dinner, you've never taken her to a hotel, you've never done anything? No, no, not for Valentine's Day. That's, it's, on, it's an overrated day, if you ask me. It's just built up for all the hallmarks and all them card companies, so I think it's just overrated. Boss, you've entered this competition because you know you're wrong. You know you should have done something for her. Well, I'm sort of hinted towards it as well. She sort of put me up for it as well. So, no, for well that I'm totally crap or everything. Mm, okay. Uh, one card in 13 years, no flowers, no nothing. And I, I, I get what you're saying about, you know, it's a Hallmark Day and all that, but the ladies like something. So, and you know, in fairness, like, I really should because, like, four kids later and all this time. and. Mm. So how would she react to a night in the Radisson Blue and a lovely dinner? Of course she'd love it. Of course course she'd love it. She might might even bring me. (laughs) Yeah, well, it'd serve you right after all these years. Good to talk to you, Barry. You're in the competition. We let you know the weekend if you're one of the winners. Thank you, thank you. Good man. Next we go to uh, Nicole. Nicole, you're on 98 FM. How are you? Hi, Jeremy. How are you? Well, I'm Adrian, but that's okay. Oh, Adrian, sorry. (laughs) Now, Nicole... Uh, when we devised this competition first, um, we thought it would be mainly men, and we were surprised by the amount of women admitting that they do nothing for Valentine's Day. Yeah, and this I I have to like get myself back together because even last year I forgot and I got flowers sent to me, so I completely just forgot. I have a head like a sieve. So uh, last... you, you you missed the, your anniversary. Yeah, I missed that last week. <laughs> oh, my God. And Because uh, normally, it's the other way around. It's normally the yeah. man that forgets it. You forgot your anniversary. You, yeah. um, But he surprised you with flowers and chocolates. Yeah. And I was standing there with not even a card. So I had nothing. Oh, how embarrassing. <laughs> yeah. So do, does he ever get a Valentine's card? Um, I, th- he, I thought last year I was exempt because he was going over to the Lebanon. He was on form up, so I thought I was getting away with not getting him a present. Mm-hmm. But he sent me flowers and anyways, so that looked even worse on my oh, behalf. Dear, dear, dear. <laughs> so, would, it be, would it be nice to treat him to a night out on Valentine's night in the Radisson Oh, Blue? Yeah, 100%. I'd love to be able to do that. All right, but look, you're in the competition, Nicole, and you'll know by the weekend if you're one of the winners. Okay, thanks. Good to so talk much. to you. Thanks, Nicole. And finally, Gary. Um, how are you, Gary? I'm not too bad. How are you? Where are you right now as you're talking to me? <laughs> right now, I'm in Amsterdam on work. You're working in Amsterdam? Yes. That's they, yeah, that's what all the men say when they go to Amsterdam. I'm working. But anyway, <laughs> okay, we'll, we'll take your word for it. Um, but okay, you haven't celebrated Valentine's Day in years. Why? I think it was it was kind of a mutual agreement as such. 
we'll work together like 11 years with three kids and so on so I think uh, the novelty of Valentine's kind of wore off after a couple of years and we just we didn't really do anything after that Tell me about what happened last year Last year oh. so again we haven't done it in a couple of years and then last year my wife comes to me and hands me a card now it might have only seemed like a card to some people but to my wife that's a big deal and it, it was actually it was really embarrassing not to have anything there then to hand back to her alright so she like gave you a, 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 a wonderful thoughtful card and you gave her yeah. diddly squat exactly and it was it was literally it was so horrible and, uh, and there was, was no point in hopping in the car and run down to the shop because the, the moment was gone wasn't it exactly even okay. if I had of it wouldn't have been as thoughtful ok well you may be able to make it up to her next week if you win this competition uh, where you would have a night out in the Radisson Blue and Golden Lane and lovely dinner and everything else. That'd make it up, wouldn't it? Oh, definitely. That would be fantastic. All right. Well, you'll know by the weekend if you're uh, one of our winners, Gary. And thanks very much indeed for talking to us. Thanks very much. Bye, bye, bye. Thank you, bye-bye. So there you are. There are three different people who need to make up for being brutal Valentines. If you want to enter the competition, it's very simple. Go on to 98fm.com forward slash love and fill out the application form that's on our website right now. 98fm.com forward slash love. Fill out the entry form and uh, fingers crossed you could be one of our winners. We'll be talking to more contestants tomorrow and then we'll be announcing the winners uh, towards the weekend. That's it from us for today. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. Andy Clark is on the way and in the next hour he's got some great music lined up like these. And the love kick starts again. With Dev Kelly Interiors. New store now open at Belgard Road, Tala. 98 FM.